Hello, this is Jack Jackson. We're going to talk a little bit about absolute convergence versus conditional convergence on infinite series. We saw above in the last video that some series, such as alternating series, converge in spite of the fact that the sum of the absolute value of each of the terms diverges. Series with this condition are said to converge conditionally. It is only the condition of the mixture of positive and negative terms that makes the series converge. Other series, like both of those from the previous exercise, are absolutely convergent, meaning that the sum of the absolute value of each of the terms converges. At first, one might not think that it matters if the series converges absolutely or if it converges conditionally. After all, it either converges or it diverges. And this is true to an extent. However, converging absolutely is a stronger condition than just saying it converges. Not only because there are some series that converge conditionally that don't converge absolutely, but it's important because absolutely convergent series behave more like finite series than conditionally convergent series. Because of the commutative and associative properties of addition of real numbers, we can rearrange, reorder, and regroup terms from a finite series as well without any effect uh, on the sum. It turns out that if a finite series is absolutely convergent, then we can also rearrange, reorder, and regroup terms in any way that we want without affecting the sum. However, if this series is conditionally convergent, then rearranging the order of the terms in the sum may lead to a series that is still conditionally convergent, but whose sum is different than the sum of the series in the original order. The order matters. In fact, it's really worse than that. It turns out that for an absolutely convergent series, there is some rearrangement of terms possible that will make the sum into whatever real number we choose. Crazy stuff. So for example, the sum of the alternating harmonic series, uh, starting with a positive term, one minus one half plus one third minus one fourth and so forth, the sum from negative sum from k equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k over k, turns out to be the natural logarithm of 2. We'll show that later on. But now let's take this. Now remember, this is summing in this order. 1, and then you do 1 minus a half, and you do that plus a third, and you do all that, those three terms added, then add the fourth one, and then the fifth one, and so forth. Look at that sequence of partial sums and see what it approaches. That's what that sum means. Now let's multiply by a half, so we can distribute that all the way across. So now we have a half minus a fourth plus a sixth minus an eighth. And if we wanted to, we could think of that as zero plus a half plus zero plus a negative fourth plus zero plus a negative one sixth and so forth. Okay, now I'm going to take the original series up here and add this one. Now what am I doing? On one hand, I'm adding log of two plus half a log of two, so I get three halves log of two. And on the other hand, I could, should be able to add these up as we go. So 1 plus 0 is 1. Negative a half plus a half is 0. 1 third plus 0 is a third. Negative 1 fourth plus negative 1 fourth is negative 1 half. 1 fifth plus 0 is a fifth. 1 six, negative 1 six plus 1 six is 0. 1 seventh plus 0 is 1 seventh. Negative 1 eighth and negative 1 eighth is negative 1 fourth. 1 ninth and 0 adds up to 1 ninth. Negative 1 tenth and 1 tenth is 0. 1 eleventh and 0 is 1 eleventh. Negative 1 twelfth, negative 1 twelfth is 0. So if you look uh, as negative uh, 1 over 24. Okay, let's fix that. Okay, I think I have this right now. Negative 1 tenth plus 1 tenth is 0. Then we have the 1 eleventh next plus 0. The negative 1 twelfth plus negative 1 twelfth is negative 1 sixth. Okay, and then these should be in the opposite order down here. Let me fix 